to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Please turn to your left and right, greet someone, and then be seated. Praise the name of the Lord. Every time God wants to visit a territory, He does that by sending His word. And you see, the way it works is that you cannot believe until you hear. The Bible gives us the dynamics of hearing and being transformed by the power of God's word in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 15. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. Will we have it projected, media? Okay, let me use my Bible then. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 10 I meant to say forgive me Romans 10 let me read verse 14 and 15 apologies I'm not sure it will be projected for now it says how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent so look how it works you are sent to preach you preach so they hear they hear so they believe they believe and they are saved so if there is no salvation is because there is no faith and if there is no faith is because there is no hearing and if there is no hearing it is because there is no communicator of that truth and if there is no communicator of that truth is because he is not sent this is what the bible says are we together so every time we see that god has sent people we know that in the presence of a preacher there must be the hearing of faith and when there is the hearing of faith then there is believing and whenever there is believing there will always be a manifestation of those things that were spoken by the Lord and so I pray that within the few minutes that we have to share tonight that you minimize distraction and let your heart be inclined to the word because when the word comes it comes to lift Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 the Bible says how that he told me son of God rise upon your feet and ezekiel had no strength to rise verse 2 says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the communications of god's word is more than a lecture beyond the words and the thoughts communicated there is an impartation of the spirit behind that word and it makes that word fruitful and it makes it produce results hallelujah i'll be teaching 
along the line of the theme and i just want to introduce us tonight to the whole idea of enlargement and then we'll look at a few dynamics by tomorrow but i believe with all my heart that anything that is here not planted and ordained of the christ will not survive these sessions We'll raise your banner high, we shine your light so bright, we'll sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Nadoka ka sunanka, ubangi chika isayabo. Nagir mama sunanka, ubangi very simple song. Nina Loka Kasunanka Ubangi Chika Isaya Nagi Mama Sunanka Ubangi Proverbs chapter four and verse eight. Oh dear. I wish I hope that the walk on the projection so that we can make progress turn with me if you will to proverbs let's begin tonight from there proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 did i say 8 apologies 18 proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 here's what the bible says the bible says but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That the path of the just is in the similitude of a shining light that shines ever brighter, some versions will say, unto the perfect day. In redemption, all believers with no exception, please pay attention, all believers with no exception have the heritage and the destiny of the glory that excels we call it the ever increasing glory are we together the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then it says we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror the glory of god now it says we are changed from glory to glory so advancement and excellence is the heritage of the believer in Christ. You have to understand this. On account, I hope you realize that the Christian faith is predicated upon Jesus Christ who came as a revelation of the love of the Father. The foundation of the Christian experience is not just God, it's Jesus Christ sent. The Bible calls him the express image of the invisible god hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 it says god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed to be heir over all things are we together and then the bible calls him the express image of the invisible god so the foundation of a believer's journey starts with jesus christ 
not miracles not signs not wonders jesus christ is the foundation the focal points the epicenter of the christian experience if for any reason you route your christian experience through any other angle miracles signs wonders breakthrough eventually you will collide with error the journey has to start with jesus christ all the other provisions will come on the way but he becomes the foundation and he becomes the focal point of the christian faith are we together that means every other thing we are going to discuss in this conference and in any sermon must be derived from that standpoint it is because of jesus and the possibilities that his death has provided his burial his ascension his exaltation it is from that standpoint we can now begin to examine the implication of what happened when he died and resurrected are we together Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 the Bible says Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus he began to mentor them and he said blessed be the father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says who had blessed us are we together blessed us with all spiritual blessings not some all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ you have to understand this so we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings that reside in the realm of the spirit and only routed to the saints through the office of the Christ. That means you cannot obtain any true spiritual blessing in isolation to Christ. He is the door, he said. The door that opens you up. A door means an authorized channel. If a visitor comes to your house through a window, he's in your house but he's not invited. Because the window is not the way to get into the house. Is that true? When a visitor passes through a door, that means that he is welcome. That means he passed legitimately. Are we following tonight? Right, so I said all that to let us know that in Christ, listen carefully, we have the destiny of the glory that excels. It is the will of God. Listen and pay attention, please. It is the will of God that my life and your life should demonstrate the excellence of the kingdom. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 paul again was mentoring the church in ephesus and he began to tell how that when you read from verse 3 the point of emphasis is verse 10 just leave verse 10 but from verse 3 he says how that by revelation this mystery was given to him is that true that in times past in other ages it was hidden but in these last days he had revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit verse 10 says to the intent that means this is the whole goal behind all of this to the intent that now that it be known to principalities and powers by the church that there be a demonstration of the multi-dimensional multi-faceted wisdom of god romans chapter 8 when you read from verse 18 and 19 the bible says i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of god one version says creation is waiting for god to reveal those who his sons truly are apostle john was teaching and he says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god it says now are we the sons of god and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like so we have been called into a life of excellence we have been called into a life of glory advancement is part of every believer's heritage enlargement is part of every believer's heritage if you do not believe this as true the grace to walk in it is never released you have to understand this the assignment of the anointing is to validate the word of god that means if there is no sent word the anointing has no assignment in your life the anointing has the singular assignment of bringing expression and validity to the word of god the assignment makes the word to always look and remain true that's the assignment of the anointing so if there is no sent word the anointing is barren we have been called into the life of grace and excellence never allow anybody preach you out of this truth that in christ according to the authority of scripture that is greater than the opinions of men 
that is greater than the sentiments of religion let god be true and every man be a liar the word of god is very vocal as to the fact that in christ we all have a holy calling is that true the bible says that we are a royal priesthood and holy nation it calls us a peculiar people it says we have been called out of darkness into light to reveal the glory the excellence of god so advancement is our heritage in christ enlargement is our heritage in christ biology shows us that wired into man and creation is the instinct and the mandate to multiply and to increase in genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 are we still together the bible says when god made man when he got to verse 26 he says and god said let us make man the word there is the word eloha god said the singular the godhead said let us make man in our own image and let that man be after our likeness what does it mean to be after the image of god the spiritual character the glory of god then the likeness of god means to function like him two hands one head are we see? that is the likeness but the image of god is what satan was looking for you see satan already had the likeness of god but he wanted the image so the bible says that he gave us dominion pay attention please he gave us dominion when you read from 26 down to 20, 28 he blessed man adam dark earth when he blessed that man the woman was still in the man at the time and he gave them dominion over the birds of the air the fish of the sea now listen the instruction was be fruitful then multiply then replenish then subdue and he says to have dominion so part of the dominion mandate necessitates enlargement it is disobedience to remain at the same level are we together now please pay attention it is it is not it is not an issue of showing that you are moving well a command was given and the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful faithful to the call faithful to the command are we still together the instincts to enlarge so when a woman takes in a seed from her husband without any effort on her own part the seed begins to grow is that true and to occupy the entire space of the womb as at the time of the arrival that seed is something that may not even be seen with the natural eye but then because of that dominion because of that command because of that character of god to enlarge the seed begins to enlarge until after nine months you now don't have a tiny seed again you have a full grown baby and you would think that's the end of the enlargement when the baby comes out of another environment the enlargement continues are we together now yes luke chapter 2 and verse 52 speaking about jesus himself the bible says and jesus increased he enlarged he increased in wisdom in favor the bible declares are we together in stature and then in favor with god and with men even jesus the word of god he increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men let's run through a few scriptures to convince us and to rest that case once and for all that it is god's desire for us to increase that means it is never god's desire for you to be at the same level where he started with you listen in the parable of the talents matthew 25 just keep it there we're not reading it the bible says that he gave unto one three men is that true he gave unto one five talent he gave unto another two talent the last he gave one talent and then the bible says he went and allowed them to do whatever they wanted to do with it the one with five talent did something and expanded he increased he had five more the one with two had two more but the one who had one even though he had only one at least he did not lose that one 
you think he will be commended for at least still having that one left when the master came back and demanded accountability the one who had five had five more well done thou good and faithful servant hallelujah sorry about that in one of the synoptic accounts you would see that the reward given to them was authority over greater kingdoms greater territories was the reward that was given to them and then the one with one talent yes what he said he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of doing this i i buried it in the earth and he looked at him and he called him number one wicked number two unprofitable that means god never expects anything to remain the way he started it if god gave you a mind he should not see you at that same level god is a god of motion god is a god that moves he does not remain at the same level the only thing that is consistent is his character but as far as the vastness of his glory is it is ever increasing worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain by the time john would see the same jesus who mentored him on earth in the book of revelation it was another level of glory it was not the same glory he saw john saw him in the isle of patmos and he said you mean this is the man that i walked with god should never find you at the same level spiritually financially in your influence it should never be that you should be at the same level listen as a man of god the grace that was upon you when you started should not be the same level of grace that grace and peace can be multiplied your wisdom should not be at the same level your influence should not be at the same level the access to resources that you have should not be at the same level your comprehension of spiritual truth should not be at the same level let's look at the following scriptures very quickly am i wasting your time psalm 115 verse 4 please write it if a little bible study now media please help us as much as you can psalm 115 and verse 14 115 and verse 14 i may not be able to turn to them but if we can have them projected thank you god bless you read it with me please we'll be reading it very quickly ready one to read it says the lord shall increase you he never said more just once the lord shall increase you more and more and your faith keeps adding more and more and more and more and more the lord shall increase you someone prophesy say the lord, the lord shall increase me more and more forget about what your bank account is saying forget about what your village is saying just prophesy the lord shall increase me more and more Please sit down isaiah chapter 54 please from verse 1 to 3 very quickly please write it down these are scriptures you see the basis of our confidence in the faith work is not just the speakings of a man of god but the scripture don't just believe because you like and trust who is speaking you must believe because it is truth from the word of god this is why I am running through scripture. I already believe what I am telling you. But I need you to believe it. Psalm 54 from verse 1 to 3. 1 to read Yola. Sing, O barren. Oh dear. Just, just start from verse 2 since you are already there. Please. Let's go to verse 2. We are reading just 2 and 3. Psalm. You got it right. Ah, Isaiah did I miss something Isaiah 54 forgive me 
Isaiah 54. You were correct. Thank you. All right. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Uh huh. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. Why? For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Verse 2. Read if you are a Christian. Uh huh. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strength. May verse 3 be a prophecy for you. Go ahead and read. It said, For thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left. Job chapter 8, verse 7. Next verse. Job chapter 8 verse 7 I'm showing you from the authority of scripture that it is in every believer's destiny not the destiny of men of God not the destiny of special people from wealthy families from any village from any city don't let nobody bully you through their orientation the moment you are in Christ you sustain the same potential if you believe to enlarge and hear me for those of you who may think i'm coming from a background where i can't speak english i didn't have the privilege to go to school i bring you words of comfort there is a god in heaven and if you can place your faith he will pick you from right from that village that place where you are job chapter 8 and verse 7 job 8 and verse 7 go ahead and prophesy as you read ready one to read it says though thy beginning was small yet thy latter end hallelujah i know i went to a school where we sat on the ground to read but don't be too quick to laugh at me god is doing something i know i came from a family where we go to the farm before we go to school though my beginning be small i may not look like it but the spirit of grace sustains the ability to enlarge you that one day when you tell people this is where i came from they will say we can't believe this that's why i sang that song it is because the lamb has prevailed worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Mighty, mighty is the Lamb. Mighty, mighty is the Lamb. Mighty, mighty is the Lamb that was slain. Listen, I may not have any evidence around my life right now. My parents may be in a room where you can see the sky from inside that room. You may not even have any privilege as far as a sociological advantage is concerned. But right where you are, your first assignment is to believe that on account of what Jesus has done, there is an opportunity given to all men. Pay attention. Given to all men regardless your age regardless your gender there is no thing like too late abraham started at 75. never say it is too late we're talking about the god of heaven are you following my discussion now so please sit now that you know and you believe that in christ listen do you know why we respect scripture so much because god is bound to his word not to your needs he's bound to his word not to your emotions he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he only responds in honor to his word so if the basis of your activity in the scripture is just or in the faith life is just emotions you may not get anything from god now when the devil tries to ask you what makes you think tomorrow you are going to be blessing the world from this village you will sing this song for him it is because that lamb has prevailed 
is worthy to open the book and when the book is open crying and weeping stops it says weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed are we still together so it is our destiny in christ and being as simple as possible so that everybody can understand let me give us one last scripture genesis chapter 17 this was a promise that was made to abraham and verse 6 genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 remember that every promise that was made to abraham was made to abraham and his seed which was jesus not isaac his seed and then the bible says in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 it says if ye be christ then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so we know for a shorty that everything we see god tell abraham by the covenant of being grafted into christ that truth is applicable to us this is doctrine are we together now genesis 17 and verse 6 read it as though god were speaking to you if you have it projected genesis 17 and 6 genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 do i turn there or do we have to wait okay fine read with me please one two read now keep that scripture there hold on where you see thee i want you to change it and put your name do you believe that one to read and i will make joshua selman exceeding fruitful I really want you to believe everything I have been saying can I tell you this God does not lie Allah by our career if he speaks it is because he sustains the ability to make it happen there are two people who will shout now under the anointing please bring them out we'll continue but i just saw a light i just saw the power of god there are two people god is bringing mighty deliverance i just saw that light please bring them out right now as i'm speaking the mighty power of god is coming on two people Bring them out. hearing a name Jonah who is that please Jonah we're going to sit down to continue scripture but let's just honor what God is doing I'm hearing a name Jonah who is who is that I don't know if he's a gentleman or Jonah I just want to speak to that person right now Jonah is there someone like that Jonah listen god does not play games and entertain people no every time you see remember you prayed and fasted and prepared 
the power of God is coming on two people outside among these people at the overflow as I just saw a strong anointing coming on two people this is a program that this territory will never recover from the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit now in the name of Jesus everything that represents witchcraft over this family I stand by the God of heaven and I command it let it be destroyed now let it be destroyed now here at the upper room cathedral we take authority over everything that has kept these destinies and these families down now let them go in the name of Jesus one of these I don't know I'm seeing light just the ministry of angels where these our mothers are I'm seeing the power of God come on one of them I don't know why but I'm seeing there's something God is taking out right now this is what I'm seeing help them please I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus the son of the living God just this robe this is what I'm seeing I decree and I declare by the power that in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is not of God I curse it right now I curse it right now in the name of Jesus Christ hold the gentleman hallelujah okay it's the Lord hallelujah there's a gentleman who is going to start running out now just hold the person and bring the person out whether you are an usher or not this is a ministry of signs and wonders so it's, it's nothing unscriptural we love Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on a gentleman saying please do not miss any session of this especially tomorrow night um, I trust that God will grant grace there are some of you who came here with hunger to receive hunger to receive an impartation for your ministries help that lady don't leave them standing help her please so that they don't fall ushers just make sure you are around them don't leave them standing help them so you yourself don't fall Victor you may need to help them eh? just guide them on what to do I'm seeing chains and I'm seeing the number seven there are seven people under the sound of my voice i'm seeing chains around your hand right now we'll continue but the power of god is coming on all seven of them please bring them out here right now in the name that is above all names i come by the rod of the higher priesthood here at yola in the name of jesus every devil that has held anyone's destiny down let them go now help them please let them go now Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help anyone under the anointing there. Please bring them out. I decree and declare deliverance. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute. Decree and declare. This is my night of encounter in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Adamawa, a revival comes to your territory. In the name of Jesus, a revival comes to your territory. There is no planting and no skimming of darkness that will stand your way this night. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. That was Hallelujah.
Hold on, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you a pastor? This man on white. Hold on. You are a pastor. You have a church? Ah? Huh? Please don't see this as a distraction. Help us. Very soon they will be back to their seat. You organized a meeting with hunger and you asked the Lord to come and visit your territory. This is why he has come. Father, in the name of Jesus, every power that is not of the Christ, we command in the name of Jesus, they leave these families now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Here at Upper Room Cathedral, in the name of Jesus, we bring liberty to these families. You are a pastor from where? Oasis of love. Oasis of love. Can I pray for you? Because I'm seeing that God is. Stand up. I'm seeing God placing a teaching grace in a strong dimension. A teaching grace. I stretch my hands. May that power come upon you. You will never be the same. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I decree and declare every family here represented that has been held by any siege of darkness be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. And every blessing that has been stolen from every family, their joy, their peace, we command a sevenfold restoration now. Let these families never be the same, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We establish your victory. We declare that liberty is yours in Christ. Let it be so now. Let it be so forever. In Jesus name I pray please be seated if you can those that are fine you can take them back to their seats don't lose touch of what we are teaching we are still teaching Every time the word of God comes, his power is also there to heal, to deliver, and to bless. Help them, please. Just help them. Listen, let me explain something. Some of you, I know that it's nothing new in the body of Christ to see the manifestations of the spirit like this. But I want you to know that when God moves like this, um, here and there I know that there have been abuses of grace and there's been misuse of things here and there but please don't you confuse what is happening there are people genuinely called of God who have paid their price with God in the spirit are we together now I need to say this so that you understand that so that the next time you are praying and you're saying God come and visit our land he really answers prayers but you must be ready to receive the answer he's bringing. You will be amazed to hear the testimonies from these lives. Doors that have been closed, open, age-long captivities, just like that. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down every ocean road to the Lord of Lords we will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun 
to the end of every day praise Adonai all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise as many of them who can return just let them be but please be patient we're not wasting our time these people are not just making noise here God is helping them we declare your liberty for you you don't have to bring everyone who is under the anointing just help them except I ask you to do so in the name of Jesus Christ your families are restored your families are delivered in the name of Jesus Christ all right please sit down let's see if we can continue don't worry they'll be fine if you have a space to sit sit so we're discussing the subject of enlargement that it is possible for an individual to experience increase on all sides that means your spiritual fire when we talk of enlargement we're not just talking of physical enlargement when you grow and expand and increase spiritually when you grow and expand and increase intellectually when you grow and expand when your fire for god when the anointing and the engracing of the spirit upon your life steps into new horizons that is also enlargement are we together now but i want to point out something very important there for tonight i want you to know and if you can still hear me i want you to write this down there is a price there is a price for increase and for enlargement there is a price for increase and enlargement my assignment tonight is to number one open you up to the possibility of increase all wise but then in addition to that to begin to show you the conditions that must be met for an individual to step into it you want greater levels of fire greater levels of grace greater levels of influence please hear me there is a price and our inability to understand the price component of spiritual things is the reason why we keep claiming them and never walk in the experience of them there is a real price for fire there is a price for kingdom wealth there is a price for increase numerically geometrically there is a price for lifting there is a price are we together price number one let's redeem the time what is the first price if i want to enlarge if i am tired of my current level territorially speaking if i am tired of my current level spiritually if i am tired of my current level ministerially politically economically what is the first price that must be paid to help an individual rise listen god is answering your prayer now because some of you have asked questions lord i am a man of god i love you sincerely but why do i remain at the same level even my church at the same level financially at the same level spiritually at the same level after many years nothing seems to change there is a price to be paid price number one please write it down the first price that must be paid is the price of correct perception the price of correct perception you want enlargement in your life correct perception Jeremiah chapter 1 please give us verse 11 and 12 and then we we'll examine a few more scriptures Jeremiah chapter 1 11 and 12 my goodness the price of correct or accurate perception Jeremiah let's read if you can see it ready read it says moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying Jeremiah what seest thou 
is a question until then he had proposed to him that right from when you were in your mother's womb i called you i ordained you to be a prophet to the nations and the young boy jeremiah said but i'm a little child he says say not that you are a little child but everything i tell you to say you will say and to whoever i send you to go to go to and don't be afraid of their faces and then verse 11 please look up don't worry they will all be fine just look up it says what seest thou and jeremiah replied and said i see the rod of an almond tree next verse verse 12 and the lord says thou hast well seen thou hast seen correctly in other words you can see wrongly there was a time that jesus healed a blind man and said what do you see and the man said i see men like trees if jesus had left that man like that and that man wrote a book that man will call men trees perception 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 now keep the scripture there we're not done please keep the scripture there jeremiah 1 verse 12 thou has well seen as a result i will hasten my word to perform what you have seen not just what i have said the performance is over your perception there cannot be an enlargement until there is a miracle of superior perception now hear me please brothers and sisters servants of the living god co-laborers politicians those in government listen carefully culturally speaking and sociologically speaking every single one represented here we come from different families we come from different cultural backgrounds and many times because of our sociology we have embraced perceptions listen carefully we have embraced perceptions that have come either from culture perceptions that have come from our failures perceptions that have come from the way we were taught hallelujah perceptions that have come from our experiences look up please chances are if i grew up from a family and a background where i never saw the hand of god to bring favor i suffered for everything i spent 10 years to finish primary school another 10 years to finish secondary school another 10 years to finish university another 10 years to start a job if you ever hear a man say god can favor men you may not believe it because your background did not capture that reality If you have never seen the sick healed in your life even though you know god heals the sick chances are you will not believe that god can use you to heal the sick perception is important dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 